I hope everyone out there in my audience today had a chance to sit back, relax, spend some time with family, friends, and loved ones, perhaps even enjoy a frosty cold beverage in the process. Here in Florida, right now is the time of the recording of this video. It is right before sunset, and I'm sure we are all looking forward to the fireworks show. Over the last six to seven years, however, this channel has dedicated itself to providing the truth, the unvarnished truth, for those folks who are in command of their thought life. They aren't just led about by emotions and feelings, and unfortunately, this particular holiday is one of those that we celebrate for sometimes the wrong reasons. A lot of stories make their way around social media about what the Founding Fathers' intent was and what they were doing that are just patently false. And in this video, I'm going to go through some of those. And hopefully, people will take away a much more accurate idea. You see, it's very easy to make a painting of one moment in time. This is, of course, a representation of... Um, the Minutemen at Concord, New Hampshire. It's a great thing to show people and then to concoct a story around it. But the reality is something very different. And once you look at and actually read the facts, this is probably the conclusion that you're going to come to, is exactly how effing stupid exactly have we been. And... There's something going on right now here in 2024 that kind of even points to this. It shows us something about our current government versus that government. What if I told you that the current government we live under is far more restrictive and far more onerous than the king ever was? Now, once again, battlefield of the mind. These types of topics are for people who can maintain their emotions, be in control of their emotions, and still engage their mind, and take the information and then put it up against the cold light of, you know, truth. Is this exactly the case without being bantered about by the wind of feelings? If you'd like to join us over the Florida Monkey Patreon channel, it's only one single U.S. dollar per month. That's it. One dollar a month. In these days of inflation, you can't get anything for a dollar a month. Not even a not even a single cold beverage out of a machine. Here you get access to literally hundreds of hours of videos. Hundreds of videos going back years and years and years talking about this exact same subject for literally pocket change per month. It's even less if you sign up for an entire year. There's a $5 level as well. Those videos are not for the faint of heart. If you're kind of new to the idea of thinking and not feeling... Perhaps enjoy the $1 level for a while, and then maybe take the plunge to the $5 level. Love to have you. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for signing up. Now, it is very strange to me that a lot of people who decry Hollywood every chance they can, they call Holly weird and talk about this, when they come out with something like The Patriot back in 2000, they just buy it. They buy it, and they laud it, and they lift it up, and they... They talk about how accurate it was and how fantastic it was when it could literally not have been farther from the truth. The depictions in The Patriot of what life was like at that time are wildly, wildly inaccurate. The entire war, the revolution, started because of something called the quote-unquote intolerable acts. And it was all about money, but it was even more than just money. People thought it was about freedom. The governing bodies here in the colonies were mad because they wanted to pass their own laws and control their own people and not let King George have any say in it whatsoever. And if you think that's not the case, read the Constitution. There are 27 grievances, half of which, half of which have to do with wanting to pass even more laws that the king was basically saying, look, we already have laws covering this in England, your colonies. You fall under the control of England. We paid for you to be there. You don't need yet even more laws to control the people. It was seen as treason. And that's why he called them treasonous. It was because they were there on the British dime enjoyed British security and British civilization, 
and I can prove it to you by one major event that really started the war, but in none of the complaints, none of the complaints that the colonists had against the king, was there any talk of free speech or any talk of gun rights, nor of voting rights for that matter. None of that, none of that got even brought up. You see, the men here were much like the men there. They wanted power. They wanted control. They wanted authority. And what do we see in Washington, D.C. now? Lo, these only a couple centuries later. King George himself would have been embarrassed to see, to, I mean, he would have, the king of king and queen, kings and queens, pardon me, of England, France, and Spain combined didn't ascend themselves to the level of power that Washington, D.C. does over our lives. You see, this is the story they don't tell you of the revolution. The boats that brought everybody here, the supplies that they brought with them, the security forces, the ability to build buildings and roads and set up British colonies, was all paid for by the governments of Great Britain, of Great Britain, France, and primarily Spain. Six people, kings and queens. And they said, you know what? We're going to empty our coffers now, the governments of those nations, and invest. Invest in ships, invest in people, invest in all this, because there's untold amount of natural resources that we can tax in the future to pay ourselves back. Well, guess what happened? The people they sent over here to affect that decided, you know what? Eh, no, we're not going to pay you back. No, nah, sorry. We, you know, we, we want the money now. See, it says King George III refused to allow American colonists representation in Parliament. It doesn't say, of course, that the vast majority of colonists had family back in England who had representation in Parliament. No response to colonists' complaints and official grievances because the vast majority of grievances were of none effect. And here's the real story, seven and a half minutes in. Angry colonists, angry over being taxed to pay for the French and Indian War that literally kept the colony safe, complained that their rights as... Okay, here's something that's going to really blow your mind. Complained that their rights as British citizens... Wait a minute, Florida Marquis. There was no Bill of Rights before our Bill of Rights. Yes, there was. Yes, there was. There was a Bill of Rights that was passed in England. And wait until you read what's in that. See, a lot of people don't know about the Bill of Rights of 1689. Wanted King George to recognize their rights. And they wanted to be independent. You see, this was much more common than is reported because now it is not PC to talk about a certain group of people in a certain way. But believe me, there was a reason for the French and Indian War. There was a reason that the colonies needed a large military presence. Because very rightfully, so, I mean, we were usurpers. We were trespassers. The land was occupied by people who didn't like us being here. And if we wanted to be here, there was going to have to be people with guns. Just like Jack Nicholson said, in a few good men, we need walls. And on those walls, we need men with guns willing to do violence on your behalf. And that's what was needed back then. And that cost money. Now, if you think I'm kidding about the grievances and there being nothing about gun rights, nothing about freedom of speech, and nothing about voting rights, go to read right through them. Grievance one. Speaking of the king, he has refused to assent to, his, to laws most wholesome and necessary for the public good. Forbidden governors to pass laws. Pass laws for the accommodation of large districts. Called together legislative bodies to do this at places unusual and uncomfortable. Dissolved represent, representative houses trying to pass even more laws to control your life. And finally, it takes all the way, all the way down here to Grievance 7, he has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose, obstructing the laws for naturalism. You see, they wanted to bring in, just like right now, massive amounts of the colonists, you know, the good guys, you know, the people who fought for this holiday? They wanted to have open borders. They wanted people coming from all over the place. 
because it meant money. It meant money. At that particular time, there had been a large influx of German immigrants, and the king didn't like that. And you can go through here. There's nothing about that. But Florida Maquis, what about that other Bill of Rights? Think I'm kidding? You can look it up. Bill of Rights of 1689, and wait until you read this. Here's the act, and real quick, freedom of speech included. Fines and promises of fines and for, for, forfeitures, pardon me, before conviction are illegal and void. Now, this is Great Britain who passed these, passed these rights. Jurors in trials, for high treason, have to be property owners. No cruel and unusual punishment. No excessive bail. Keeping a standing army in the time of peace, unless it be with consent of parliament, is against the law. Meaning things like Blackwater would be illegal. You see, they had rights. They had all sorts of rights, and that's what this was really all about. But Florida Monkey, what about the Tea Party? You see, this is where people really get confused. They don't even know why the Tea Party occurred. So they see images like this, and they see this, uh, they, you know, they think what England was doing was so cruel and horrible and terrible to the colonies by imposing taxes compared to now. Compared to now, they were nothing. You see, the Coercive Intolerable Acts were passed in 1774 after, after the Boston Tea Party. Now, what happened at the Boston Tea Party? When I read this, this is going to blow your mind about what this was all about. The Boston Tea Party was an American political and mercantile protest, December 16, 1773, by the Sons of Liberty in Boston in colonial Massachusetts. The way they word this, it's kind of hard to understand. I'm going to go through it slowly. The target was the Tea Act of May 10, 1773, which allowed the East India Company, the British East India Company, to sell tea that they had gotten in China in American colonies without paying taxes apart from those that were imposed by the Townsend Acts. Now, tea is not a requirement for life. Tea is a luxury. Tea is a very British thing, of course, and it was a luxury of the rich. Now, what the Sons of Liberty wanted to have happen is there be yet even more taxes allowed on, the, on that tea, other than those imposed by the Townsend Acts, which went straight back to England. You see, it was British ships that were transporting the tea, built by Britain, completely manned by British crews, bringing that tea all the way to the colonies and then wanting to sell it. And the Sons of Liberty wanted to add more taxes on top of taxes imposed by the Townsend Acts, making it yet even more expensive. And when they passed a law saying, no, you can't do this, because these are our ships, our tea, and oh, by the way, you are British colonies, these quote-unquote Sons of Liberty boarded the ships and, of course, dumped the tea over. And that's what that story was all about. And that's what set everything off. It was about money. And it was about depriving rich people of things rich people think they're entitled to at a certain price for free. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Nothing about gun rights. Nothing about freedom of speech. Nothing about voting rights. Nothing about separation of church and state. Nothing about all this had anything to do with it. That's why the Constitution, none of it was ratified until 13 years after the war had ended. They thought up a whole bunch of other crap. Now, think about that in the context of our modern world, where now the entire good of the country, everybody's happiness is now dependent on whether Biden is king for another six months, three months, four months, whatever, 
Or if yet another incredibly old guy takes the reins and he's king for four years. But all happiness and all goodness and light in the world is all completely dependent on what happens in Washington, D.C. King George himself. King George himself would be aghast at what goes on in D.C. And that we celebrate Independence Day is laughable. I mean, the world, and the world has woken up to this. They realize we're a paper tiger. Everybody's just doing whatever the hell they want to do. Remember everything I said about Venezuela? Remember when I said, you know, the sanctions are going to have an effect for a time, but that's just going to force Venezuela to make other deals. Same thing with the sanctions on Russia. Russia is now a very wealthy nation. And their oil revenues continue to grow even on, even with U.S. sanctions. And now people are clamoring for another, for another tyrant, another dictator to step in. It's a, it's a strange thing to set fireworks off over. Because anyone who knows anything about the revolution knows how badly we were getting our ass kicked. How badly we were getting our ass kicked until Washington sent letters to his really good buddy, the King of France. And the French came. And the French came in mass and defeated the British with the help of what the colonists knew. The colonists were basically intelligence assets at this point. They knew the lay of the land. They knew, you know, where they could get away with what they could get away with. And the British were sorely lacking in that. And being nearly broke from having settled the new world, putting all that money up front, the French could swoop right in. And we know what the Louisiana... Go look at a picture of the Louisiana Purchase. How much land the French took as a result of that and how much we had to pay them to get that money back while we were completely genociding the natives at the same time. So, just saying, the uh, what we refer to sometimes as the American dream is the American dream of some, not of all. And... One of the, let's see, hold on a second, see if I can find this on the grievances. One of these grievances was about laws governing the slaves. Here it is. Grievance number one, he has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. The colonial assemblies passed various legislation, including ones on governing their slaves, creating colonial currencies and requesting representatives to be sent to the British Parliament. However, the king withheld his approval. But basically, that was the same thing. They didn't care about freedom of peoples, of men. They didn't care. They truly didn't. There were, there were disposable people. There were human weeds. There were um, all sorts of things that we would look at now when we would look at these men and we would say, these guys are not heroes. Don't get me started on their attitudes about women, girls, and their role and use in society. If you think Epstein was bad, if you think Epstein was bad, these guys, well, before I get this video demonetized, I probably shouldn't repeat what I was going to say, but believe me, Epstein would have been milk toast. Epstein wouldn't have even been a criminal compared to what these guys did regarding that. So I will leave it there. So like I said, Sit back, relax, enjoy Independence Day. Lift up your family, friends, and loved ones. You know, have a good time, but do know the truth. Don't, don't be deceived. Battlefield of the mind. Love to have you at the Patreon channel. Um, it's a tough thing to say stuff like this and, and not have people get angry and visceral and call people unpatriotic. There's nothing more patriotic than the truth. 
One U.S. dollar per month. That's it. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time.